Good old Illinois in the open road tolling. Nickel and dime you every step of the way. I don't think I've ever driven on the Eisenhower Expressway and not sat in some type of traffic. Even today on a Sunday morning. Now don't quote me on this, but I believe that is the Harold Washington Library, named after the first black mayor of Chicago who served from 1984 to 1987. Greetings friends, welcome back to Mike Allen from Chicagoland. As you can probably tell from the opening montage, we are in Chicago proper for the first time on this channel. And today I'm coming to you from the Field Museum. So just as a reminder, I do try and visit museums uh, similar to the Field Museum on this channel along with historical locations, roadside attractions, nature preserves and things of that nature. So if uh, that sort of content interests you, please consider giving my channel a like and a subscribe. So now that that's out of the way, without further ado, let's head inside and I'll show you the Field Museum. Now the city of Chicago did just reinstitute its mask policy uh, at the time of this recording, so these are required. Um, kind of interesting, the, the north entrance uh, looks like uh, is undergoing some construction, so at the time of this recording you have to enter through the east side of the building. So I'm going to just take you through the corridor, uh, through the east side, and then head up into the main, uh, main part of the museum. There's just some of the exhibits that you see when you first walk in, along the east corridor. Here's some taxidermied elephants. They've been the focal point of the museum's main lobby since 1909. This is Maximo. So it's a titanosaur. Also here in the main lobby. There's limestone, over 1.8 million years old. You can notice the glacial markings on them. And that there's a mastodon tooth and a woolly mammoth tooth. There's the woolly mammoth tusks. It's a replica of a Pueblo hut. Some pottery down there and dinner. A place where they would cook f over the fire. So here's a section that talks about the Pueblo people who lived in the southwest North America. Here's an ancestral Pueblan wooden ladder. Estimated to be built between 800 to 1600 AD. Here's just a sampling of some of the ceramic pottery used by the Pueblo. Uh, Cahokia, Illinois, located just south of St. Louis along the Mississippi River, are known for the Cahokia Mounds. 
There's what they look like back at the height of the Cahokian people's power some 1,000 to 1,100 years ago. Definitely a place I want to visit someday. There's a whole room dedicated to the Maya people. Always found this time in history to be very fascinating. Set up shop in what is now Guatemala, Mexico and Honduras and Belize. Replica of the ancient Mayan city of Tikal. What is now in Guatemala today. Here's what the ruins look like. You know, I'm always reminded of the Robocop actor Peter Weller, who's done a ton of History Channel pieces on the uh, ancient Mayan. So every time I walk through an exhibit like this, I hear his voice saying to me, Tecal, or some other ancient Mayan city. giant replica of the Aztec sunstone. This here is called an Inuksuk, made by the Inuit people of the Arctic as directional markers. Replicas of whaling boats used by the Inuits. Taxidermied muskrat there. That is one massive golden eagle. And it's a nest here. These here are bearing seabirds. From a distance, they kind of resemble penguins until you get up closer and see them. There's the Rocky Mountain goat. Every time I hear the word condor, I think of the old ride at Six Flags Great America, the condor. Here's a taxidermied real one. There's a white-tailed buck. There's a group of white-tailed deer, both doe and buck. Here's something I didn't know. Without natural fires, moose would starve. Here are the extinct Mexican grizzly bears, which unfortunately are no longer around. I sure as heck wouldn't want to be coming up on an Alaskan bear, that's for sure. This thing's got to be at least eight or nine feet tall. Bison on the American prairie. These here are the jaws of a sperm whale. replica of what one looks like. The orangutans. Don't know why, but I think of Ed Grail and Poe's eight chained orangutans. And the hyenas. And who could forget the humble panda. Getting inside the Africa exhibit now. Here's a picture of the royal palace of the Bamoon people of Western Cameroon. This here is called the Baobab. It is the national tree of Senegal. Still inside the African exhibit and just wanted to show you this life-size hippo. I'm always reminded of when Bill Bear Grylls said that if he were to jump into a watering hole with hippos, he's like, I would be dead in a second. They're very territorial creatures. Let's see, the gorilla sounds here. Is the gorilla agitated or playful? 
agitated. When a gorilla is agitated or alarmed, it thumps rapidly on its chest. Interesting. Is the gorilla grouchy or relaxed? Both. Young gorillas grumble to let others know when they're getting too close. This is interesting here is a cassette tape for sale. Man rides a bike here and sells cassettes out of the back of it here. Walking into the museum's interpretation of a African slave ship. of a slave cabin here. Heading into Evolving Planet now to see Sue the T-Rex. This apparently is the largest flying mammal that ever lived. I cannot pronounce the name of it, so maybe someone in the comments will know. Here's some information on it. Yeah, this thing is tall. And they have these broken down by each of the mass extinctions that have taken place during Earth's history. This here is an ancient fossilized shark. This here is called a Tiktaalik, I think is how you pronounce it. And I remember learning about these on, I think, Discovery Channel or something similar. And it talks about how it was one of the first links when fish started evolving into mammals. Some of the fossils you can find in the Maison Creek area in north central Illinois. Some ferns. Horse tails, arthropods, there's a replica forest, ancient forest from the Maison Creek in north central Illinois. Gives you an opportunity to spot some of these vertebrates and insects here. I'm not going to take, take the time to try and spot them, but here you can actually see some of them on the on the trees. This gigantic arthropod here. Ancient earth. That's called a primitive tetrapod or amphibian. 290 to 248 million years ago. And after mass extinction, number three gave way to the dinosaurs. There's the 72 foot long and 33 ton Apatosaurus. This is a Ceratopsian, a lot smaller than what they eventually evolved into. Some of them into Triceratops and other forms of similar species. And here's part of the Triceratops family. Much bigger than what we were just looking at. This is the Parasaurolophus. So this here is the real skull of Sue the T-Rex. The information was saying that it was damaged when it was fossilized and it was too heavy to put on a 
on her actual body. So when we go see it, it's going to be a replica head on top of her body. But this here is the real thing. This is the real deal. And here she is. The one and only Sue. I remember coming to the Field Museum in high school and seeing coming soon posters. It's pretty cool. I've seen this before, but it's always always a cool sight. Just can't even explain the massive size of something like this unless you're standing here in person. Ceratops skull. Here's some information on where Sue's fossils were found. In the Hell Creek Formation, what is now modern day South Dakota, North Dakota, Montana area. And after the dinosaurs went extinct. Just some of the animals that were able to thrive in this new earth. A woolly mammoth here. Bison and then ancient horses. Charging my phone, I noticed this smaller replica of that large flying mammal that we just saw upstairs. Now that was just a small snapshot of some of the things that the Field Museum has here. So I highly recommend coming back and seeing some of the other things that I wasn't able to profile today, but I think I got time for just one more stop. Outside the famous Billy Goat Tavern now, established 1934. The place was made famous by the um, Saturday Night Life skit with the late great John Belushi. So we're going to head inside, get a cheeseburger, chips, and coke. And as Anthony Bourdain would say, classic combo right there. Got the cheeseburger, chips, and Coke. And this place continues to keep the legend of the Billy Goat alive, even after the Cubs won the World Series in 2016. So I'm a diehard Cubs fan, and I'm embarrassed to say I didn't learn about this place until college. Yeah, that, uh, even more ironic is that it was a St. Louis Cardinal fan, of all people, who introduced me to the Billy Goat Tavern. He was my uh, college newspaper advisor and brought me here on a, on a group outing to Chicago. And uh, the rest is history. been coming to the Billy Goat Tavern anytime I'm in the city. So thank you for joining me on this uh, trip in uh, downtown Chicago, my first visit here for this uh, channel. Uh, enjoy going to the Fuel Museum and lunch at the Billy Goat Tavern. And trust me, there's a lot more, a lot more content coming. I'm uh, going to continue on this YouTube journey. This has been a lot of fun so far and enjoyed having you along with me. So if you just wouldn't mind hitting that uh, like and subscribe button, I would uh, greatly appreciate it. Uh, until next time, this is... Uh, Mike Allen from Chicagoland signing off and I'll see you in the next video.